Good afternoon, everyone. It's Jeanette Martin of MyBC Consulting hijacking Andy Shellhorns. Hello. Page once again to talk about real estate. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing excellent. It um, we're starting a new year, uh, new endeavors, um, and I'm looking forward to moving forward. Hopefully, COVID will be behind us soon, um, and all those other good things that uh, can transpire in the upcoming year. I'm really excited for this because this morning, as before we came on live, I was mentioning I was in a, a meeting, a Zoom meeting with a friend of mine that lives in Nova Scotia. And it's almost yeah. like what you've been saying is echoing across Canada. And um, and she's saying it's, it's just as trying in uh, Nova Scotia. So I am um, anxious to get into your presentation on what's going on in the real estate market. Sure. Yeah. No, it, it is across Canada. It is uh, throughout the States too. Their market oh. is uh, booming and uh, it, uh, uh, it all comes down to, to inventory. Mm. So yeah. Are we ready to go? Oh yeah. Cause I, you know, it's, it feels new year, end of year. And, uh, and it's definitely some exciting and you are the expert, my friend. Okay. Here, I'm going to share my screen then. And uh, here we go. So um, yeah. Um, it is moving forward. There we go. Didn't click fast enough. So market statistics. So last year, the Fraser Valley uh, Real Estate Board processed 27,692 sales for 2021. That was a 39% increase uh, year over year and a 15.5% increase from the last peak in 2016. All our numbers right now are uh, devastating the 2016 uh, peak, which we thought the market was just totally incredible then. The supply of new inventory in 2021 reached 35,629 new listings, and that was the second highest processed in the board's history, and it was 12.4% increase compared to, to last year. Now, um, Andy, a couple of questions there before sure. you go ahead, because uh, remember, I'm, I'm your person out here thinking yeah. the thoughts that your your potential clients or past clients. So when I hear things like that, you've got a solid recommendation for a mover. Like I think of all those houses being and people moving and on the move. You've got the people that you can recommend like a mover, your home stager, your mortgage broker, your, oh, yes. Um, yes. your notary, like you've got all that to take that stress off my mind, right? Yes, you, you bet. Um, I've developed relationships over the years, over the past 25 years. Uh, yeah. for, with movers, for stagers, for um, photography, for aerial droning. Uh, and uh, we right now we have a fantastic team. Yes. Okay, good. Because good. that's, you know, in, in our heads, we got to go tick, tick, tick. How can we yeah. make this happen? Yeah. No, okay. it's, I'm, I'm, I believe in the big plan, the whole plan, and a plan that works for, for my clients. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. So um, yeah, MLS statistics as of December 31st. So you can see that in December 2020, the, uh, the sales for that month uh, outperformed uh, how many new listings there were. And from that point on in December 20th, uh, all the way through uh, 2021, we continued with that trend where the, the amount of listings as opposed to the amount of sales was very, very neck and neck, which still created a, a lack of inventory. So this has been an ongoing issue for the whole year of 2020, uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and here we've got um, uh, the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board's months of inventory, all asset classes. And you can see this is this is um, homes for sale, how many homes for sale we had. Here's mm -hmm. the foreign buyer tax. Remember that came in in 2016 mm -hmm. with the, um, the Liberal government. Here's the mortgage stress test. And both of them brought inventories up. Uh, the price did uh, decrease. But since then, um, each time you can see that the market responded, buyers uh, started picking up inventory and uh, the inventory did go down until COVID hit and we got a skyrocketing uh, level of inventory, inventory. But the buyers came back and they came back with us with a vengeance and they have we are now in historic low inventory levels. We don't have a, enough homes for sale. And yeah, yeah this is across Canada. And wow. this is not necessarily that it is um, uh, buyer driven, but it's also too that we haven't built enough homes for mm. how many people we have in Canada. 
And that is um, right across the country. So MLS statistics, Fraser Valley inventory, uh, here we show uh, in December, we had 0.63 of a month of inventory for condos, 0.46 for townhouses and detached homes was 0.96. That means that um, more homes sold than were listed in, um, in December of last year. So this is coming into now 2022. And what are we gonna see then? We're going to see the same effect carry through for the next few months. And of course, with low inventory, we have mm -hmm. escalating pricing and townhouses and condos are starting to pick up a bit more because there's just not enough detached homes for sale. And also too, I think we're starting to see affordability issues. People cannot afford uh, these homes anymore. Uh, we've got uh, almost a 40% increase in terms of the over year over year, and uh, which was really incredible last year. Andy, quick question for sure. there is how important is it in this day and age and in this market to have that mortgage pre-approved, have, like you said, the team behind you to go out and work with you to go buy a new home or to sell a new home? How important is it to um, have that pre-approved mortgage? I, what does I, that look like these days if it was yesterday, it was approved for this and Yes, um, uh, a really good example of being prepared and pre-approved. Uh, we uh, we were bidding on a home in South Surrey, and it was listed for one million five hundred and eighty-eight thousand. Um, there were two offers at one million nine hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, so you can think of how many there was twenty-one offers. Ours was one of them at one million nine hundred and fifty thousand. My client had not um, gotten their deposit check in hand before we made their offer presentation. So the other side had written a non-subject offer at the same price, but they had the deposit check ready, already made out, and they got the deal. So even a small thing like that can put you in a position where you don't get the house. Personally, I was kind of happy they didn't get the home because at that price, I thought we were paying way too much. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you, have, you need to be prepared and right. you need to have all your ducks in a row uh, because it's very, very competitive out there. And the more of the uh, um, uh, um, things like the deposit check ready on hand, financing approved, um, even doing a pre-inspection um, mm. can, uh, can put you in a better position when you present your offer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So MLS statistics inventory December. So this is going to Langley now, and the numbers are a little bit less than, than the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board. Here we've got 0.48 of, uh, of uh, uh, condos. Uh, we've got uh, 0.22 of, of uh, townhouses and 0.84 of detached homes. So that means that in the month of December, everything sold and, and uh, before the end of the month, and there was nothing left. In fact, uh, Walnut Grove, I think uh, in January, early, early January, late December, had uh, four or five homes for sale. And usually they have 30, 40, maybe 50 homes mm -hmm. for sale. Um, Fort Langley, there's nothing for sale right now. No detached homes. You know, if this was a retail store, you'd be going out of business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without yeah, this yeah. kind of stock yeah. on hand. You know, they're talking about uh, supply bottlenecks. This is what right. we're experiencing. We have a supply bottleneck. Uh, this wow. is our uh, MLS statistics. So you can see that the uh, HPI, the home price index for Langley was at 1.560. We started the year at 1,136,800. That's, I believe, about a 37% increase over the year. That's incredible. That's, that's wow. huge. Um, and then here we can see that townhouses and condos are, are following suit, but not quite as drastic. And I, but I do think that we'll see um, that those prices pick up uh, as the affordability factor uh, levels off for detached homes. A little question for, for that. If you can go sure. back to the other slide for me for a sec. So typically that 1.5, that 770,000, 520,000, Briefly describe what the description of that property would be at 1.5, at 700, and at uh, that 520. What kind of apartment would you be getting for, you know, 520,000? Uh, that would be like average. Yeah, it would be a two-bedroom apartment in Langley, um, roughly eight, 
900 square feet, maybe a okay. thousand square feet, uh, probably built anywhere around 2000. Um, the, you know, the, the home price index is that they, they actually put together what the model is of, okay. um, for a average type home in uh, that area. So, mm -hmm. and the same for the townhouses, uh, 771, 200. You can think that in Willoughby, there's a lot of townhomes, they're newer, they're bigger, um, but they have tandem garages and things like that. Some have double garages. They're running around eight, 900,000, but in Walnut Grove, we've got um, more of an entry level that's running around six to 650. They were okay. built in the 90s, uh, that kind of thing. So that kind of average is what okay. we're looking at. And of course, the detached home at 1.5. Well, in Fort Langley, um, lot value is 1.5. People are building their dream homes on a quarter acre lot. Whereas in, in Walnut Grove, we're starting to see that uh, the average uh, basement entry home is probably shooting around 1.5. Ranchers are about 1.2 and newer homes are, are uh, higher to, at around 2 million. But what kind of square footage is that, Andy, like for that type of house? Um, for that basement entry home at 1.560 Walnut Grove, you're probably looking at about 2,200 square feet. Okay, big enough for a nice, uh, nice family to get in there and raise a family. Yeah, and, would, and probably a suite in the basement. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little yeah, bit of a no, mortgage helper then. We need to have mortgage helpers because with this kind of pricing, it's just so difficult to get in without that, uh, without that uh, extra income. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm loving, I'm, I'm a visualization. I have to visualize numbers in order for them to make sense for me. Sure. And you're helping me uh, <laughs> explain as I can run through these numbers very quickly and I know them and I understand them, but, um, you know, thank you for Jeanette for, for asking those questions to, to make it more real. Um, and then, oh, and so, this. yeah, this, this last slide just shows that, you know, this is from the Canadian real estate association. And, you know, home sales are down 9.9% across Canada uh, year over year. And uh, um, new listings are down 15%. Uh, and that's, again, uh, year over year. And the average price went up uh, 17%. So this is something that we're seeing across Canada is that the inventory levels are down. And this is for the, the month of December. Uh, of course, sales were down a little bit too because there's just not enough inventory, but pricing for the month was up 17% across the, Canada, the country. Wow. And, that, you know, and for BC, it was 22%. Uh, so that, that whole thought process where some people go, well, I'm going to sell here and kind of move across the country where it's a little less expensive. It's, yeah, it looks yeah. like it's balancing out going all the way across Canada. Yeah, yeah, well, true enough. But, you know, like if you... Um, People are moving into the interior. Yeah, Kelowna prices are starting to take off uh, with Soyuz and uh, uh, Kamloops and, and places like that, but they're still priced um, relatively a lot less than uh, being living here in the lower mainland where our pricing is, is um, you know, at top notch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, people have been moving out of the province into Calgary because, uh, you know, even though their, their pricing is less there. Also, too, I have clients that are looking for Gulf Islands, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, they, they want to downsize and they're selling and they're, uh, they're detached home here in the little bit mainland and, uh, and buying a small cottage to, to live and retire on. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Fascinating. I, I just, I love the numbers. I love the visuals connected to it. Um, uh, is that your last slide? Yes, that, that's it. Perfect. Let's uh, let's just yeah. go back to uh, having our, yeah. our beautiful faces on here. It's yeah. it's fascinating to me. I'm a renter, and it gives me some framework to work towards. And I know there's you've got over 1,500 followers on your Facebook page, um, and there's people out there like me, and they they ask and think the same kind of questions that I think. And what's it going to take for me to get into into the market? And I think that big one that people have to get their head wrapped around is if you do have a big enough home to have that mortgage helper, like that's yeah. what you're going to yeah. have to live through. If you want a little bit of property, a little yeah. bit bigger house, that that is the dynamic that a lot of people, I'd say maybe five, six, 10 years ago, didn't think that they would even consider buying that type of home. Yes. Yeah. We're seeing, you know, all the new homes have suites in them. 
even um, in Vancouver, we're starting to see lane housing, that kind of thing, uh, more, uh, high, a little bit more higher densities. We need higher densities. We need to do some infill to, to help with our um, inventory issue. It is something that is driving the market and um, we're not hearing about foreign home buyers anymore. Uh, we're not uh, hearing um, about speculators. I mean, all that kind of stuff, it, it you know was in the news, but they just weren't looking at the issue of inventory and inventory has been driving the market since the 90s. Uh, historically, there was a, a professor out of uh, Toronto that was talking saying that if we had 100,000 new units right across Canada right now, we would still have inventory issues. That's how far we've been uh, uh, le left everything behind in terms of building. Wow. So my friend, what's going on in Fort Langley? Anything you want to talk about in your community? Anything happening? Well, the um, it's you know it's that time of year. We 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 just finished up um, our Christmas uh, celebrations, our New Year's. Uh, there's a new restaurant um, opened oh. up in the uh, Cultivary Building. It's called uh, Sava, um, and uh, I haven't had a chance to get there yet. But they also too, uh, we love going down to Julia's uh, Magic Escapa. That's my favorite. And uh, yeah, no, the stores are open, everything is going on. Um, and we've got a, well, hopefully we'll see a lot of great things happen this year in Port Langley. Perfect. Well, I'll wrap it up with a special thank you to Andy and his wife, Nina. Um, yesterday was my birthday. Yes. And um, I yeah. posted out that I was raising some funds and still am for Night Shift Street Ministries. They help street friends serve a hot meal both in Langley as well as in Surrey. And Andy and his beautiful wife um, did a donation yesterday for my birthday. So I appreciate that, my friend. The more that we help out each other, our community, we build, the, uh, we build a city, town, township on how uh, we want to live and thrive in. So I want to say a public thank you um, well, to you and your lovely wife, uh, Nina. It was, it was a, yeah, it, you know, it, to me, it's really, really important that we give back to our community in uh, many different ways. And I encourage everybody to look around once in a while to think about how they can help their community, because I think we're seeing way too much of, you know, what can I do for me? And, uh, uh, and we need to change a little bit to what can we do to help ourselves, our families, our friends, our neighbors, because then we uplift everybody and we have a better community for it. You got it. And I think that's yeah. a perfect place to leave this. So until next month, yeah. when we I get to hijack your uh, Facebook page again and yes. talk real estate with you, Andy. Have a great weekend and um, we'll see you again. In yes. a Thank you, Jeanette. Take care. All the best bye -bye. to you. Bye.